Welcome to Soil Extractor Engineering Problems uh, YouTube channel. So today I will uh, make a demonstration to, to give you some advices about how to manage geometries for problems of uh, piles and soil interaction when you have group of piles with a relatively big number of piles. So we have covered the setup of a model in a previous video but uh, I will do it again for a more complex problem, adding, uh, let's say, some advices to, to manage in a better way what is uh, the step-by-step -step, uh, setting up of the model. For example, in here I have um, a geometry created already. So um, if we, we check uh, the different solids I have created. We have the group of pi, we have two layers of soils in this case. And I will hide these um, layers of soil to show that the group of piles in this case is nine piles in an arrangement in a rectangular pattern. So I will use in this demonstration um, a tool that uh, provide design modeler to create uh, this group of pile in an easy way. Because um, in the previous video we have created the, the piles one by one, by one defining precisely the dimension of the cross section of the piles over the cap and um, adjusting the location of every single uh, cross section on, on a plane. So this is um, a valid way of doing it, but there are simple ways of solving um, geometrical problems or the creation of the geometry for, for problems like this uh, using different tools. So the idea then is to, to demonstrate how to create this geometry in particular in a in an easier way, let's say, if we compare with the previous video. So I will close uh, this design modeler for now, and I will start from scratch for you to see every single step of the, of the process. So I will double click in geometry to create a new box in here for a new geometry, and I will open design modeler from scratch. So of course, before creating the geometry of any problem, you need to study the geometry on a piece of paper and define all the dimensions um, perfectly well to, to, to have you know precision when you are creating the, the problem in, in design modeler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the plane XY in this case to create the, the group of piles um, from the beginning, and I will start in this uh, in this uh, case with the piles directly instead of starting with the cap. So I will locate my plane in a proper position. I will select units. In this case, I will work in millimeters because I have been doing the the work of studying the dimensions I need for my problem in millimeters. So um, more or less in these scales, I'm adjusting just the scale to see. The, the pile in a proper scale. So I will start using a sketching on the plane XY of a circle from the center. So I will take advantage of the coordinate system and I will locate the center of the first cross section of the first pile in here. And I will assign a, a random diameter for the moment. And immediately after I can add dimensions to, the dia to this diameter, and for example, let's say the diameters of my pipe will be 500 millimeters. So I will change the diameters in this um, a variable D1. And now I have uh, the cross section of the first pile in, um, with 500 millimeters in diameter allocated in the center of the coordinate system in the plane XY. So I need to extrude this circle in order to create a first pile. So let's say I will use extrude and I will say that the length of these piles will be 15 meters, so 15,000 uh, millimeters. And I will generate the solid. And here is the, um, the advantage of using patterns. So instead of having to do this uh, nine times, because in this case, the group of pile will be of nine piles, I will use patterns to, you know, to replicate the first pile uh, in a very simple way. 
So in order to do that, I will zoom in for you to see clearly the process. So I will use then um, in the menu create, I will use pattern and I will choose to, to work with this entity, which is the pile I have created before and I will apply. So I have selected one body and I will use a pattern as a rectangular pattern because I will have a group of three times three piles, so nine in total. So I will have two directions to work with, to work with. So I will say that the first direction will be the direction of this axis, the X axis in the positive direction. And I will apply. And I will say that the other direction to produce the, this um, arrangement will be this in the Y direction, in the positive Y direction, and I will apply. And I have to define in this case, the separation will be between piles. Uh, the offset is called in the in the software and I will say that this will be um, 1500 millimeters and I will copy twice because I need in total three piles in this direction. In the other direction I will do the same because the arrangements will be um, more than rectangular will be a square and the number of copies will be two as well. So once I have defined all these variables in the tool patterns, I just generate, and you see that in a very easy way, we have created the group of nine piles in a very, very simple way. So avoiding all sort of, you know, uh, dimensions and location of every center and things like that, that have complicated a little bit the geometry um, in the previous video. So now what I can do is I want to create a cap for this, uh, nine piles, I will create another plane or I will use the plane X, Y because uh, actually I don't need to create any plane because I will, in this case, consider that the solid I want to create will be the cap and the nine piles together. If you want to create um, a group of nine independent piles of the cap, you should add um, a gap between the cap and the and the piles not to merge all the solid because at this moment, as you see in the in the in the design modeler, you have created these nine independent solid that represent every single pile of your group of piles. But when we merge all of this with the cap, we are going to have only one solid that represents the group of piles itself. So all depend on your needs and your 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 definition in the way you want to define and the way you want to study the 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 problem but in this case this is what i'm going to do i'm going to merge the cap with the with the rest of the pipes so i will still use this uh this plane and i will uh, add another sketch a second sketch for for the cap so i will use the guy to position this in the proper way and i will use rectangle to create my cap approximately like this and now I will use the axis that originally I have used for the first pipe to, to locate exactly the, um, the cap where I want. So in the first place, I will add dimension to this cap. So in this direction and in this direction, so vertical and horizontal direction. And I have calculated that the cap will be 4,500 millimeters times 4,500 millimeters. And the distance between the center to the to every uh, lateral of the of the cap will be 0 0.25 meters or 750 millimeters. So I will add dimensions from this. No, I have a problem because yes, because I have already defined this dimension. So I will uh, make Control Z to uh, delete the last command. I will choose horizontal dimensions. Uh, dimension. So I will. Add the dimension from here to this axis. Hopefully it will be possible. Yes, it is. So this one will be 750 millimeters. And I will add one more um, dimension in the vertical direction in this case from this line to this line in here. So with this operation, I have created um, a plane for my cap that is perfectly centered with the piles. And now I will extrude this rectangle to create the cap itself in 3D. 
The cap will be only half a meter, so I will change this to 500 millimeters. And as you see that the extrusion is in the same direction as the piles, so we need to invert the extrusion to the other side in this case. So I will use direction in here and I will apply a reverse to extrude in the opposite direction just to create a cap in the way I want to create it. So now we have a cap that is um, connected with the nine piles we have created in the group. And you can see now that instead of having 10 solids or nine solids um, plus the cap, we have only one solid that is the group of piles all connected with the, with the cap. So I will call this solid 10 piles group. Hmm. like this, to identify uh, in the future, in the model, exactly uh, what is every, every, every solid of this model. So now I will create the, um, the soil in contact with these uh, piles, and this will be a little bit more complicated because I cannot use the patterns, um, or at least I think maybe I can use it. So I, I will try to make a trick in here to, to create um, the soil around the around these piles in a in a clever way. So in the first place I will create a plane. So a plane that uh, will use as a reference this face at the bottom of the cap. So I will use this button here to create a plane, and I will say that the plane will be um, have a reference this face at the bottom of the cap and I will apply, and I will use transform as I did before in the Z direction, because Z direction is the blue one, and I will add in here a small gap of a millimeter, because I don't want to share the same plane um, of the cap and the pipes with the soil, because I need to create the interaction between them in the future, so I will create this gap of one millimeter. So once I do that and I create this uh, this plane, I have a plane to to work with um, with the soil or the, the solid that will represent the soil. So um, let's see. Uh, I'm thinking is I'm changing the name of this plane, uh, but I, I will keep it because it's not going to be so complicated. Uh, I won't need to, to to have names for this plane. So I'm working on the plane for now, and what I need to do is I need to to create concentric circles with these circles that represent the cross section of the pile. So in the first place, I will sketch the first one. So I will use this uh, as a reference, this point that is the origin of coordinates. So to create a concentric, a concentric um, circle that will be a hole in the soil. And for now, I will keep this uh, this dimension, but just to to have access after, I will add uh, without changing. For the moment, is around seventy hundred and fifty millimeters. I can round is like if, if if I want, of course. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an extra another circle concentric again. And in order to do that, I will use um, a tool that is offset. So with offset, you click in the circle and after you end and you can create another circle like this, for example. And we are going to end the, the, the command. So I will now make an extrusion of the geometries I have created right now to uh, create a kind of cylinder that will contain the pile. So I will uh, make it for now just 500 millimeters and I will generate. So now I have a solid. I will be able to use patterns to, to simplify the um, generation of this, uh, of this soil I'm trying to create. So let me just position this in a proper way. So I will now use the command um, pattern. I, I'm not, I didn't use the pattern for the circle directly because the software uh, 
does not allow to do it. So only works, pattern only works with solid. So I will select patterns again. So I will use this solid to create the pattern. I will apply and I will use rectangular as before. So the, um, the parameters will be the same because we are needing exactly the same as we needed for the piles. But what I need to select is the direction of the different pattern. So this direction will be this one, no need to be the opposite. So I assume I can cancel it's this one. So I'm trying to select them. So if I do it in this side, it's not what I need. I need the opposite. So I will cancel this one again and I will do it in this side. I am not able to okay i have the possibility to change in here with this button so this is the direction i want to generate the the, the arrange and i will apply now so and for the other direction i need the opposite direction in this direction like this so now because the parameters are the same i will apply directly and i will generate and hopefully i will have something that will be useful for me and yes it is useful because um it's uh, more or less what i need I need to, to change a couple of parameters to have exactly cover all the areas and not having any hole I don't know, I don't want to have in the soil. So in the first place, I will go back to the sketch where I have created these um, circles and I will add a dimension I didn't add before, the dimension of the external circle. And I will increase this to 2000 and see if with this is enough to, to close these holes in here, I'm not interested in. So I will generate and I still having some small holes in there that are not useful for my mission in here of creating a soil very close to the piles. So I will increase this again a little bit more, let's say 2100 and I will generate again. And now I'm still having a little bit of hole in there, so I will add a little bit more material, a little bit more, more radius. And now I will generate again, and now I have covered all the holes I'm not interested in. And for the moment, what I need to do now is to close or to, yes, to, to reduce the diameter of the hole to, to have a, a hole very close to the, to the pile. So I will use 502. So one millimeter gap between the pile and the soil and I will then generate. You see now we are very very close and we have created a sort of geometry that will represent the soil but still not exactly what what I, I need to do. So um, I will now increase the um, destruction to see more clear what I have at the moment. So I will add in here instead of 500 the length of the piles and I will generate. And I see now that I have um, a solid that is going to represent the soil and it was created in a let's say simpler way than in the previous video. But I need to add more uh, soil around this uh, arrangement I have created. So what I'm going to do now then is to use again the plane I have created for the sketch of the circles and I will create a new sketch. And in this sketch I will define then two rectangles. The first one will be uh, a rectangle that will represent the, let's say, the area of the soil I will consider in my soil structure interaction problem. And another circle that will contain or will, uh, you know, be overlapped with the, overlap with the previous solid I have created because I want to merge these two geometries. 
and now I will use extrude same a length and I will apply and I will generate and now I have something that is approximately what I want so it's um it's a portion of solid that contain the group of piles um, and with holes very well adjusted to create you know the the interaction in the in ANSYS workbench after but I will introduce some dimensions in this uh, sketching here to to have precision in in this uh, in this volume so I will assign dimensions then in this direction and in this direction and both of them will be the same because this is a square and the value will be 14,500 millimeters in both directions and I will position as well this um, rectangle exactly where I want it so I think is the horizontal dimension will be from this axis to this line in here will be 5000 and from this line to this axis but in the vertical direction sorry for that it's gonna be as well 5000 so with these two dimensions i think i will have position exactly uh, the solid exactly where i want it so i will check this if this is the case but i'm seeing that there is no there is something that is not working because this is not perfectly centered and i know why because this uh is from the should be from the border of the cap to the to the border of the soil but what i'm going to do is i will simply recalculate because I need to add 750 millimeter in every direction so this will be 5750 and this will be 5750 and now hopefully I'm going to have something perfectly centered and this is the case so now I have um, a block a solid that represents the soil in contact almost in contact with the piles so I will need to extend this a little bit more because I will have some some soil under the the group of piles. Let's say for doing that, and because there will be continuity, that will be the same soil. I will create a plane, considering the face at the bottom of this uh, geometry, and I won't create any transformation in here because I don't need it. Um, I will then create a, sorry so I am okay I have to generate the plane first so in this plane I can create now a sketch with a rectangle that will go from this corner exactly to this other corner and once I have defined this rectangle I just need to extrude a, a dimension that in this case will be five thousands just because I'm I'm deciding right now that this is what I want or this is what you need so I will generate and you see that I have now the geometry that is perfectly well uh, designed the group of pile and this soil containing the the group of piles and in case you are interested in creating a second layer of soils or more layer of soils um, in order to distinguish in between different layers of soil you need to create again a plane but with a small gap so in order to do that you create a plane using the face again in this case will be this face in here you will apply and you will apply a transformation in the exact direction and with a millimeter gap and you will generate the plane so now you can use that plane to again proceed to create a rectangle from this corner in here to the other corner in here and simply you know extruding the quantity you need in this case will be five meters and I will generate and now as you see what I have is basically the geometry I wanted to create 
So I have two layers of soils that have a gap between them, so I can identify uh, different layers. So let's say this solid in here will represent the layer one, and the other solid will represent the layer two of the soil we are going to use to simulate this uh, soil structural interaction. And that's it basically. So um, in order to to check properly the geometry, probably it's good to, for example, to create uh, a cat in here to check. So what I'm going to do is I can, for example, yes, I can hide this layer and I can hide, hide this layer as well. So I can see um, the group of piles in this direction. So I can create this um, section plane, it's called. So I can create this section plane to see how is the appearance of the, the group of piles in this uh, particular plane in the middle that is crossing all the piles. And when I show all the bodies, now I'm able to see um, in which way I have created this geometry and how well is adjusted in order to create this small gap of a millimeter to create after the connections that are needed to, to simulate the, the interaction between the group of piles and the, the soil, basically. So this will be the geometry I'm going to use in this, um, in this example. So um, we are going to close now the geometry and I will end this part of the video and I will after create is another part to explain the next step in the creation of this soil extractor interaction problem. Thank you.